All right, final video and my thoughts. I'm going to show this. This is just a clip. I watched a 10-minute clip. This is just a clip of it. George Floyd, a man that was uh, had the police called on him because he was forging a check. I don't know what it was for. I don't know if it was for food or anything else. I know there's a lot of Americans in a really bad spot right now. I also know there's a lot of Americans that are trying to just take advantage of the situation. I don't know what the case is. But I do know that when the police showed up to arrest him, you'll see they've got him on his belly. They've got handcuffs on him. And this officer sat with his knee on his neck for close to, or if not over, 10 minutes. Here's one little clip, just so you know what I'm talking about, and then I'll share my thoughts on all of it. Right there. Ah, there's water or something. Please. Please. Ah, I can't breathe. Ah, Shut up. They're going to kill me. they going to kill me, man. Ah, That went on like that for, again, close to 10 minutes. That officer had his hand in his pocket. His demeanor was, I'm more powerful than you. I'm better than you. You're going to do what I say. The man literally was begging for his life. He said, I can't breathe multiple times. For 10 minutes, that officer had his knee on George's neck. Ongoers that were recording this were telling the officer he can't breathe. He can't breathe. He's not resisting. Why are you still on him? The officer standing in front, keeping the people back. He's fine. He's fine. The officer with his knee in his neck didn't move. At one point, he even told him to get up. He was on his neck. He's telling George to get up and get in the car while he's sitting on his neck. Unfortunately, even though George was crying out, they're going to kill me, that's exactly what they did. Those cries from George were literally his last cries, his last words. As an officer of the law had his knee on his neck, while, way long after he had been resisting. Again, I watched the full video. I watched about 10 to 12 minutes. Absolutely disgusting. And in the middle of a, an, a current climate like we're in right now, where there's already so much race baiting, what in the world could be going on through any officer's mind to not let that man up, to potentially endanger his life, which is exactly what they did, and I gotta tell you, I love the law enforcement. I love officers. I'm thankful for them. They have a hell of a job and they get a bad rap because of scumbags like that. That man and none of those individuals, which there were four of them that have now been fired, thank God for that. The FBI is now investigating. Now, I don't know if this was racially motivated. One of them was Asian, one's white, one's black. But that's the narrative that the mainstream media will tell you is oh, now we got white, another white cop. With two other white cops, an Asian cop killed a black man. That's the narrative they want you to believe. Well, that's not the narrative I'm just going to buy into because that's what you say. But I'll tell you one thing. They were definitely abusing their power. I think a lot of police out there are high on the badge. They feel like they're above the law. And they feel like when they can get one over on somebody, they're going to do it. There's some out there. Again, I love the police. But these, all four of these individuals, these Former officers, now that they've been fired, they need to go to jail for murder. Period. The law needs to set an example that that is not going to be tolerated. And if it comes out that that white cop had something racially motivated, there's other instances where he's done stuff like that, then that's a different matter entirely. But as it stands, that is murder. He was executed. The man was crying for his life, begging for his life. And the cop didn't move. He kept his knee on his neck for 10 minutes like that until George stopped moving completely. And then for another five minutes after he had stopped moving or talking completely, ambulance shows up. They roll over his lifeless, limp body onto a stretcher. 
and take him away. And then one of the most disgusting things I saw is that cop that had his knee on George's neck walked up to the other cop that was standing there keeping people back, shake, shook his hand like, good job. It's truly just a disgusting thing that took place. But again, I'm not going to buy into the fact, I'm not going to buy into the narrative that the mainstream media is going to say that it was racially charged. I think they're just power hungry police out there, just like there are in any other industry. Yet when you're wearing a badge, I think unfortunately, obviously, there are individuals out there that are high on their own power. We need to make sure that they are, they are held responsible, they're held accountable. And if there's other police out there and they're seeing something like this, they better step in. I, I'm going to... I, I'm going to try to do a one-on-one -on -one interview with my good friend, Officer Tatum. He and I have been uh, strong supporters, obviously, of the police. Again, he's former law enforcement SWAT for a year and a half. He says that a lot of it can go back to the training, how these cops are trained. I don't think that there's any, any cop that's being trained to keep your knee on the neck of, a, of, a, of somebody you've already arrested and is in handcuffs for 10 minutes. There's just nothing. There's, there's no, there's nothing... I was so distraught. Again, I posted it on, on Instagram. I'll probably post it here on Facebook as well. It's my last post over there on Instagram. It was raw because I was very raw. I couldn't, I couldn't believe what I had just witnessed. So our heart, our thoughts, and our prayers go out to George's family. And we pray that justice is done. That those responsible are held accountable. But we also pray that this does not create and cause more racial division between those of us out here in America that love each other regardless of the color of our skin, regardless of your background, we got to understand the mainstream media will parade this in front of all of us to try to create more division. I wish they would show and talk about the amount of deaths that take place in places like Chicago with strict gun laws, where the, I believe it was over 50 individuals, 48, 50 shot this last weekend. 12, 14 dead, one of the deadliest weekends in Chicago in recent years. Most of it black on black crime. We've got a long way to go in this country. We don't need police adding to it, but we really need the black community to hold ourselves accountable and call out the hatred and the vision that's there. And we've got to try to stand united in this country for the rule of law, for justice, for freedoms, and we've got to stand by and support our president because that's what he's standing for. I truly believe that. Here's one clip from a good friend of mine, Dr. Daryl Scott, that was invited to speak with the president that works on racial reconciliation, that is a huge proponent of all that the president has done to bring uh, justice to the criminal justice system and is doing so much more. I'm going to end with this instead of ending on that other note. Here's my good friend, Dr. Daryl Scott, recently visiting President Donald Trump. Our country has been placed on pause, but pause is not stopped. We've been on pause, but we're about to press go and get back going again. I said it before unashamedly, and I say it again. This president has been. I've lived under 12 presidential administrations. I was born during Eisenhower's administration. This president has been the most pro-black president in my lifetime. But when I say pro, I'm saying it pro in the sense of being proactive. He's been proactive rather than reactive to issues concerning minority, underserved, and disadvantaged communities than any other president in my lifetime. I really believe history is going to be kinder to you, Mr. President, than um, fake news media is today. <laughs> Can't be any worse.